30,000 fans expected for our doubleheader. Rucker, Donato, and Staff and the officials, and we're set to go in white Arizona, in navy blue Ole Miss. Arizona is bigger. Arizona has more athleticism. Arizona is a deeper team. But there's an incredible amount of heart and toughness on this Ole Miss squad. Woods, who sprained his ankle in the workout yesterday, not seriously, gets the start in the post. Gardner wide open for three, off the mark. And uh, Ole Miss has the ball as Sanders pulls down the rebound. Buck Flanagan, the point guard. Jason Holmes back out to Flanagan, and it's a very patient offense. Arizona can afford to gamble on the perimeter a lot. They got a great shot blocker, Lauren Woods, playing the best basketball of his senior season, anchoring the back line. Down to 10 on the shot clock. The freshman Reed. Flanagan takes it inside. Not there, but Lockhart, the big center, has the rebound. Flanagan gets a second chance, and Ole Miss scores first. Ole Miss, their ability to push and shove and get Arizona back underneath their own defensive backboard. Wright and Lauren Woods have to do a better job of establishing their defensive presence. Here's Arenas, the leading scorer inside to Woods. The quick turnaround, right over the back, no whistle, and Jefferson comes out with the offensive boards for Arizona, back into Wright. This matchup here is critical. Michael Wright ties it up, the junior from Chicago. Lockhart has a huge responsibility on his shoulder. He's got to guard Michael Wright all game long. Got to stay out of foul trouble. Plus, he has to carry the offense. Lockhart, the only guy in double figures in the game last week at Kansas City against Notre Dame. Block shot by Lauren Woods. Woods knocks it away from Lockhart, who's listed at 6'8". Here's Arenas on the run. It's batted away. Saved. No. The defense, again, is the hope of Rod... Barnes team from Oxford, Mississippi. They're very tenacious, quick hands, great leapers. And it has uh, been that side of the game that has uh, led them to prominence the last three years. And defense wasn't always the trademark at Ole Miss. It wasn't until Rob Evans now coaching at Arizona State in the pack. Oh. Beautiful drive by Gilbert Arenas. But the defensive intensity that Rob Evans and then the, his assistant, Rod Barnes, that is what has established Ole Miss as really a national power for the first time. Buck Flanagan on the point. Around the perim perimeter it goes. And the three-point attempt is not there for Jason Holmes. Rebound to Jefferson. Perimeter shooting is not the strength of the Rebels. Offensive foul, Lauren Woods inside. Pushing off on Reed, who at 6'8", was fronting the 7-1 center. Lauren Woods with a flash in from the weak side, clearing out the defender. Easy play to call, offensive foul all the way. Flanagan brings it down. He's from Little Rock, Arkansas. There are six of the top 12 players for Ole Miss from Arkansas, the other six from Mississippi. That's it. <laughs> That's a local program, which is what you want. And the job that Barnes has done, Arenas Stolen. out in transition. Arenas with Holmes chasing, and Gilbert Arenas has four of Arizona's six. Rob Barnes realizing the difficult straits his team is in. They like to be in the role of an underdog. Barnes telling us yesterday that today they are truly underdogs. Can they make shots? Look at Arizona playing a zone defense here challenging the outside shooting ability of Ole Miss. And Buck Flanagan nails the three at six to five. Buck. He has all five of Ole Miss's points. Buck Flanagan, the nickname Buck, after Buck Williams. His dad was his high school coach, Jason Flanagan, Al, up at Little Rock, Parkview High School. Richard Jefferson with the ball fake inside to Michael Wright. And in the crowd at last touches an Arizona Wildcat. The ability to get out in the transition game is a trademark of Arizona basketball. All because you got the big shot blocker, Lauren Woods, behind you. You can gamble on every single play. And if you don't gamble, you're hurting your team. Zone defense, once again, Arizona. Around the horn and to Sanders. Flanagan working the baseline is Holmes. And the rebound pulled down by Arizona. 
Terrific intimidation by Lauren Woods. He's he's forcing them to take shots they don't want to take. He's altering virtually every one. An errant pass by Jason Gardner. And with that, our first time out. Four minutes, ten seconds gone. Six-five Arizona. Thank you, Dick. You know, you and Bill have been talking about the matchup with Woods and Lockhart. Raheem told me before the game, I know I'm giving up five inches, but I'm going to put a body on him. Lute Olson told Lauren, when you go on offense, pretend you're going around a city block. Should be fun, Dick. <laughs> well, Lockhart at 6'8 and 255, and that's uh, being modest with the weight. He's built like an offensive tackle. And generous with the height. He's only really about 6'6". Six, six. Beautiful stroke inside. Justin and Reed, the freshman, gives Ole Miss the lead 7-6. Now, Reed did not have a strong weekend up in Kansas City against Iona and Notre Dame. So for that jumper to go down is a terrific sign for the Rebels. Arenas, a little too much foot movement, and uh, Rod Barnes right behind him, the Ole Miss coach helping out the call. Hot Rod Barnes, they called him when he was the point guard for Ole Miss and 19 point average as a senior, all SEC. Barnes, the first all SEC player to then later become the SEC coach of the year. So, terrific accomplishments for Rod Barnes. Holmes outside to Reed, two for two for the freshman, and it's nine to six Ole Miss. Justin Reed is one of the best high school recruits that Mississippi has ever had. Arizona sluggish offensively. Arenas for three. Right with a rebound. And he staggers back and the call is for traveling. Fourth turnover, Arizona. Arizona is intent on pounding the ball inside. Well, that may be a good strategy overall because after Lockhart, they don't have a lot of big guys inside. It's taken them out of their game. Jason Gardner hasn't been able to penetrate. Gilbert Arenas hasn't had any looks. Holmes to Flanagan. And a whistle away from ball. Three seconds on Lockhart. It's an interesting uh, matchup of coaches here tonight. The youngest of the Sweet 16 coaches is Rod Barnes. He's 35. And the oldest, of course, Lute Olson at 65, who brought Arizona the title four years ago. I like the way that uh, Miss, the old Miss is pressing and trapping. Generally, you'd think that would be a nightmare against this Arizona team, but Arizona's Ari getting a second chance on almost every visit, though, Bill. Jefferson. But they can't make a shot. Reed with a rebound. And there's very little in transition for the Wildcats. Holmes inside to Lockhart. He's left-handed, likes to go to his right. A great pass to Sanders who slid down the baseline. It's 11 to 6 Ole Miss. Arizona which has fallen behind a number of times this year. Terrific squad at coming back. But when you look at their seven losses this year it's all the teams that get really physical against them push them around and make them play a stand around half court game. Arizona thus far three for nine Michael Wright way outside Reed able to deflect it here comes Flanagan long pass to Lockhart big man hurrying down court can't see the open shot great recovery Arizona Flanagan takes it up the alley oh it's rejected by Arizona as Michael Wright and the Woods both up high Jefferson and recovering the ball for Arizona calls timeout Ole Miss by five Back in San Antonio, Arizona, one of the four Pac-10 teams. Of course, the Southern California Trojans, the big surprise from the West. They're in the Elite Eight. What a great story, Henry Bibby, from where he came from at the beginning in North Carolina to now bringing the Trojans into that Elite Eight against Duke. That's tomorrow. The Big Ten, the two top teams, Illinois, we'll see them later. Michigan State, the power physical teams, they'll be banging with everybody. Gonzaga, they can stroke it offensively, but the question for Gonzaga is can they rebound and play the tough game that Michigan State is going to play? And then Kansas, absolutely, the lone Big 12 squad remaining. They're on top of their game with a solid front line and explosive creative backcourt. You see the smallest man in the tournament, number 11, Jason Harrison. They list him at 5'5", five, five, probably 5'3". Five, <laughs> they oh. need to check their measuring sticks in Oxford. Jefferson taking Aaron Harper just into the game and then outside to Arenas and the rebound to John Gunn who is giving Raheem Lockhart a rest. Harper 
every single time. The disciplined, patient, grinded out defense for Mississippi. They're just forcing the perimeter shots, which aren't going down, and they're always in position. Intimidation for Woods again. They save it, yes, it comes back to Harrison. Reed trying to add to that 9-0 no! run. That's 11 unanswered points for Ole Miss. Six by the freshman Reed. If you saw Raheem or Justin Reed play last weekend in Kansas City, you would say this is not the same guy. This is the reason why he was voted the SEC Freshman of the Year, Justin Reed from Jackson, Mississippi. Lauren Woods maneuvering against the much shorter Reed and then feeds right, who is fouled by Gunn. Overpassing. Arizona's getting into the lane and they're kicking it out when they should be attacking the hoop. There's no shot blockers out there for Old Miss. Arizona not getting the job done in the offensive end. Number two score for Ole Miss, Justin Reed playing big tonight. Welcome back. Arizona had trouble early against Butler in round two, but rallied close to halftime and then uh, took over in the second half. And here's uh, the five foot three inch Jason Harrison. He made that big three point shot in the final minute to beat Notre Dame, had seven points the last 10 minutes. Tough little guy from Little Rock Parkview High School. They say he's fearless, he's Napoleonic. He doesn't back down from anyone. He's Hawkin Gardner. And his nickname is Swole, S-W-O-L-E, for swollen head with the miniature body. I, I first saw Jason Harrison about eight years ago in Des Moines, Iowa, the AAU championships in the age group divisions. He was 11 or 12 years old at the time. He was just an average sized young man at the time. Everybody else kept going, but old Swole, he's got the game of a giant. Woods unable to hit, right with a tip. It just won't fall for Arizona. They've been scoreless for five minutes and they missed their last eight shots. Arizona has difficult at times playing as the favorite. Banked in by Reed and he's hot. Justin Reed makes it a 13 point run. He leads all scores with eight. Reed, one of three players in turn. from Woods. Reed got it. And here comes Swole Harrison. Way outside for three. Oh, that would have gotten his crowd on its feet, especially in the Rebel section. No transition opportunities here. Arenas with Woods rebounding. How many just flat out layups have the Wildcats missed tonight? Out of bounds to Arizona. In comes Jason Holmes, one of the starters, and Buck uh, Flanagan, the point guard, returns. And we're also going to see for the first time Richard Kirkland. Arizona, incredibly, in the last six minutes, without a point, missing nine consecutive shots. And they bring in Gene Edgerson and Luke Walton, number four. To the bench is Michael Wright, Gilbert Arenas, Pass to Jefferson. And he misses an easy shot from the lane. Out of bounds off Edgerson. Edgerson, who is the emotional leader, the spirit of this team. He's got the old school look, the old school game. He's got the knee pads. They've got the, the black commemorative band for Bobby Olson, who passed away New Year's Day of this year. The wife of Lute Olson of 47 years and very close to the entire Arizona basketball family. Holmes, Lockhart, open on this side is Emmanuel Wade. Now back to Holmes. He hits the three. My, oh my. Ole Miss 18 to six early. The confidence that Rod Barnes has breathed into his team. The crowd surging. Always pulling for the underdog in NCAA tournament competition. Can Arizona answer? A 16-0 run for Ole Miss. Jefferson from 15, and finally, Arizona with some points after a six-minute drought. The first points for Jefferson. If Arizona's going to get it done, it's going to have to be on the defensive end. The zone defense that they're employing to try to deny Lockhart inside is exposing a huge vulnerability to the perimeter shooting, which is not normally the strength. Tapped out by Lockhart, but unsuccessfully, it's Jefferson who takes it. He misses the layup, thought he was fouled. Buck Flanagan, so tough. 
Flanagan, one of two seniors that started in the backcourt. Holmes is the other one. The other senior, Lockhart up front. The rest of the squad, very young for Rod Barnes. 88 wins, Bill Walton, for those seniors. Most ever by seniors at Ole Miss. Nice double team, Lauren Woods, who's having a huge impact defensively. Flanagan inside to Lockhart, the double team, and then the pass goes through Kirkland out of bounds to Arizona. Third turnover against the Rebels. Lockhart is a very capable passer. And Arizona might be taking too much of a gamble by double teaming him early. He hasn't hurt them, Lockhart, with his own offense. What he's hurt them with is his passing. With his, what he's hurt them with is by drawing the collapsing zone and freeing up the three-point perimeter shots. Arenas returns and Jefferson out. Flexibility, the name of the game for Arizona. Lute Olsen can go a lot of different ways. Generally, Lauren Woods gets an early rest, but he's playing so well that now Michael Wright goes to the bench. Some backcourt pressure as Flanagan goes down. Jason Gardner's got to blow by that black that backcourt pressure. Lauren Woods over the top, and Edgerson there to bat home the rebound for his first points. Again, the ice cold shooting for Arizona. Arizona's been playing terrific ball. They haven't lost since they lost at UCLA in the Pac-10 conference season in an overtime game. But with the shooting way off, the way you're going to get back into is on the offensive glass, a la Eugene Edgerson, and on the defensive end. But they stay in that zone defense, which is something that they don't do a lot of during the course of the regular season, Arizona. Edgerson, a 68% free throw shooter. Foul was on David Sanders, his first. And the three point play for the senior from New Orleans St. Augustine High School. So many terrific players out of this. St. Augustine, Avery Johnson, Kerry Kittles. How about Marshall Falk, the player <laughs> of the year in the NFL? Eight and a half to go. First half here in San Antonio, the Alamo Dome. Oh my, does Reed and Edgerson, that's a major league collision. Well, Eugene Edgerson is tough as they come. And the foul against Justin Reed, his first. Eugene Edgerson came off the bench in the Eastern Illinois game, the first round of the tournament. He sparked a huge run for Arizona. He's doing the same thing right now. The Wildcats trying to get back. The defense has picked up since Edgerson got in the lineup, but what about the offense, which continues to sputter? Walton to Edgerson, and the foul is returned. The offensive call against Edgerson for backing in. A reminder, CBS Sports coverage of the entire NCAA basketball tournament is interactive through Ultimate TV. Ole Miss's defense has just been terrific. 70 points is the magic number. If they get to 70, they win virtually every game they play. And they've played some very good opponents all year. They They're 16 and 1 if they score 70, uh, Bill. Yeah. The only loss was by one in overtime at LSU when but, they scored more than 70. But they've beaten USC this year. They've beaten Memphis at Memphis. Perimeter jumper. If they can get Reed to go cold, Arizona's had a much better chance. The pass, though, too tall. Gardner can't hit Lauren Woods. A seventh turnover, 7.49 left in this opening half. Ole Miss by seven. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome, the Midwest Sweet 16. And Ole Miss has a seven-point lead against the number two seed Arizona Wildcats. Lute Olson, after going through the trauma and the grieving of the loss of his wife, and once he returned, the team again took shape and had won eight in a row. That was certainly the low spot. I was there that weekend for the funeral services for Bobby Olson. The whole town of Tucson was dazed, stunned. Trouble getting things going as the referee is being attended to. Here at the Alamo Dome, Ole Miss leading 18-11. Uh, driving off a 16-0 run in a six-minute period against uh, Arizona, and apparently a, a lost lens by one of the officials. Now, that gives you a lot of confidence when you're a player. The referee getting his eyes worked on. He's fine now. <laughs> we have a moment. 
a seven point lead with uh, five for 19 shooting by the Arizona Wildcats and three more turnovers so and not an assist yet. Well, Arizona shooting 26 percent on the from the floor Mississippi a solid 44 percent in their patient disciplined attack Flanagan has outplayed Jason Gardner in the early going offensive foul. First foul on Flanagan Arizona has to be very careful here. They tend to play very casually against teams that they think they're a lot better than. And right now they're getting pushed around. The toughness, the personification of Rod Barnes as a player that has just oozed on to all of these guys from Ole Miss. Walton with Harper, Edgerson and Lockhart. Can Eugene Edgerson create? Who's going to make it happen offensively? Jason Gardner's been quiet. Walton back outside the Gardner with seven on the clock. Gardner fires from three. Ten and Reed has the rebound. He's had a solid game, this freshman. Very few second chance opportunities for Arizona. Tentative perimeter game for the Wildcats. Meanwhile, Raheem Lockhart, the leading scorer for Ole Miss, has yet to get in the book. Well, but it's been Justin Reed who's got eight points already. It's so very difficult to fast break against Ole Miss. And it's a steal. It's Reed again. Bad pass from the strong side to the back cutting Lauren Woods. And Arenas uh, last touches the ball out of bounds to Ole Miss, and Flanagan gets up slowly. But Justin Reed has eight points already. He had seven points before fouling out in just 13 minutes in the last game against Notre Dame up in Kansas City. John Gunn returns, Lockhart out for Ole Miss, Flanagan out, and uh, Emmanuel Wade in for the Rebels. Arizona's not accomplishing any of their goals. You've got Rod Barnes able to rest Lockhart now. Lockhart's not picking up fouls. They go very small as Barnes is controlling the tempo of this game. The SEC Coach of the Year and the Naismith National Coach of the Year. Congratulations to Rod Barnes. 35 years old. Here's Jason Harrison. He's returned. Goes up with his shot as Arenas comes down on him. They're not going to give him uh, the foul in the act. So uh, that will just be charged uh, as Arenas's first foul and for Arizona their third team foul. Jason Harrison who started a bunch of games last year but coach Rod Barnes feels that Harrison is much more valuable off the bench. Blood on his body there so they're going to have to go over there and attend to him and Rod Barnes will work the officials a little bit. Barnes wondering uh, why if he was trying to take a shot he didn't get two out of it with the conclusion of tonight's game we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team Chevrolet making a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund a grand tradition for some 30 years so you get bloodied while you're trying to take a shot and Harris has to go sit on the bench but he's the first guy since Rod Barnes when Barnes was playing in 87 and 88 to get two straight 100 plus assist seasons for the old Miss Rebels. Flanagan back in and a bad inbounds pass from Harper the freshman from Jackson and uh, the Rebels fortunate to get it back. We certainly saw a lot of that last night in the UCLA Duke game. Couldn't quite figure out those uh, those out of bounds plays for the UCLA Bruins. Didn't quite uh, that those long passes didn't really pay off much did they uh, big red. Uh, not when you throw them to the other team. Harper Holmes good ball movement. Wade unable to hit as he goes down the rebound to Michael Wright. Michael Wright who was a high school teammate for one year of Kevin Garnett. Almost turned over as uh, Flanagan got his hands on it. Edgerton back out to Jefferson for three. And the rebound Harper Mississippi. Arizona trying hard but never mistake activity for achievement as the execution just not there Lamont Frazier playing defensive guard and Gilbert Arenas gets fouled in the passing lane Arenas again with another steal he's had a solo basket already should have had another missed a layup and only the foul prevented him from getting another bucket Flanagan with a foul is second Leslie. Uh, just an update on Jason Dick. He skinned his right knee. It was below his shorts, which is hard to believe that the shorts don't go below his knee. But they're putting some alcohol on it. He'll be fine. 
All right, thank you, Leslie. Uh, yeah, he looks like he's going off to Bermuda with that outfit. <laughs> Well, Jason Harrison in the great tradition of the real little guys. Spud Webb at North Carolina State, Muggsy Bogues from Wake Forest, Earl Boykins from Eastern Michigan, and now Jason Harrison. Now, you uh, know the height of all of those. He's listed as 5'5", five five, this man, Jason Harrison. They say he's probably 5'3", compared to Muggsy Bogues. What, about the same height? Or smaller, certainly no taller than Muggsy. Michael Wright. Big muscular postman goes up with the left hand and scores. Wright makes it a five point game with his fourth of the night. We're at the five and a half minute mark here in the first half. Here at the Alamo Dome, Old Miss's big lead being cut into is Reed, the freshman unable to connect on the drive, and Arizona with the ball facing a five point deficit. Has Lockhart scored yet? Lockhart, the leading scorer for Ole Miss, has not scored, and a foul with a block against Ole Miss. And they're double-teaming Lockhart every single time. Yes, they've slowed him down scoring, but that's enabled everybody else to get their game going. Now, Michael Wright, Gene Edgerson, Lauren Woods, these guys are all terrific individual defenders. You can bring in Justin Wessel as well. At the highest levels, at championship level basketball, you've got to be able to shut down guys or at least slow them down one on one. The Wildcats have not even given themselves the opportunity today to try that. Sanders with his second foul. And the rebound to Reed. Jason Harrison back in. Uh, they taped up that uh, cut below his right knee. One of the highest scoring teams in college basketball. Arizona has 13 points with under five minutes to go in the first half. Ouch. Well, they said that uh, defense was to be admired with this old Miss team. They're showing Arizona what they've got. And Harper unable to hit, but he tips it in. The freshman from Jackson Provine High School, one of three on this old Miss roster. The initial stab by Lauren was just great. And finally, finally, something happens in a positive sense in the offensive end. Gilbert Arenas created, taking things into his own hand, much the way he did against UCLA in the second half. In the Wildcats' last loss, that overtime nightmare for Arizona. Inside to Lockhart, still scoreless. Great pass, but it goes through the hands of Reed. Two on one. And a beautiful job by Reed to hustle back and at least deny the easy basket. Mississippi on the offensive glass. Lauren Woods does a fine job of waiting, waiting, but then he, his hands go down, and that allows Ole Miss to tip it in. Gilbert Arenas answers immediately with his slashing attack of his own. Jefferson at 6-7, handling the ball outside. The way Arizona is shooting from the outside, don't get backdoored if you're Ole Miss. Lamont Frazier seeing some duty, number 23, the senior from L.A. Right with 12 on the clock into Frazier, and not there. Reed with another rebound for Ole Miss. And here comes Harper, a couple Reed, of freshmen. Reed, Lockhart, Wade. Sanders, Holmes, Flanagan, all playing terrific ball, and they're going to take a timeout and milk this tempo right now. Momentum all for Ole Miss. Back in San Antonio with a reminder preview of the Elite Eight teams with head-to-head -head matchups, exclusive columns, and cutting-edge analysis. It's all at the Internet's home of college basketball, cbs.sportsline.com. Justin Reed with five rebounds and eight points. Sparking uh, the Ole Miss Rebels tonight. He played for the Provine High School Rams where he was coached by Wayne Brett who's now an assistant to Rod Barnes here at Ole Miss. He averaged 27 points, 14 boards, 5 assists and 3 steals for the Rams up in Jackson, Mississippi. That's Reed in the corner. Lockhart having trouble with the handle. Takes it hard and can't score. Takes it back up. Misses again. And Arizona can't stick a fork in it at either end of the court. Arenas with numbers pulls up for three. They've still not hit a three-point shot. Michael Wright gets a second chance, drives in, and he is charged with no, a foul. Traveling violation. Oh, they're gonna initially. call it. All right, it's one official start again the charge call, another set traveling, and there's a timeout. Three minutes before the intermission. Arizona trails by five. back at 
the Alamo Dome. And a reminder, singular at the half upcoming with Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg. They'll catch you up on all the new uh, tournament news and a look in at Gonzaga and Michigan State from Philadelphia. That's all it's singular at the half. Bill Walton, there's some interesting zero so far. Leading score for Old Miss. Raheem Lockhart, zero points. Big center for Arizona, Lauren Woods, zero points. Assists for Arizona as a team, zero with 17 minutes gone. And that assist zero is the result of the fact that they're not making any jumpers whatsoever. Their shooting is just horrendous for Arizona. Reed walking in with a good screen from Lockhart, who just took two Wildcats with him. Well, with Lauren Woods not contributing much on the offensive end, he has had some nice blocks and intimidations here on defense. That time, clearly kept out of position by Lockhart. Arizona has been outthought during this game. Arena's the only man to really score seriously. That pass low, and it's taken away by Reed. What a complete game by this freshman. And look at little Harrison oh, the darting quickness, through. The quickness to the ball and virtually every opportunity for Ole Miss. Harper takes it in and blocked by Woods. Lockhart scores his first points. And it's back to a nine point Ole Miss lead. Lockhart had 24 points, seven boards, and three blocks on 10 for 16 shooting against Notre Dame. You can't really look at anyone other than Gilbert Arenas. And it's going to be a blocking call against Jason Harrison of Mississippi. And as Lute Olson tries to find some sort of answers, the, one of the most magical and gifted offensive units in all of college basketball has 15 points. Lute sends in Luke, as in Walton, who is yet to score as well, as Jefferson's given a breather. At the line, Jason Gardner, the sophomore from Indianapolis, or he was a, at North Central High School, Mr. Indiana Basketball, a very prestigious honor in that uh, basketball crazy state. His first point of the game, averaging 10 and a half. Arizona is at their best, and they have been on fire late with the two huge victories the last weekend of the Pac-10 Conference at Stanford. Win it in the last three seconds with a great stick back by Michael Wright. Then you win at the very end by two at Berkeley, Harmon Jim. The Berkeley guy's going crazy up there. Then you two easy victories. But right now, Arizona's getting pushed around. Arizona stands around thinking they're all too cool to get the work done necessary to win at the Sweet 16 level. There's the steal by Arenas, who's been busy. Walton, tough pass to handle. Good recovery. And Woods. And the foul. Reaching in was Reed. So Justin Reed for Ole Miss has his second. Well, a fortunate break for Arizona because the ball was out in front of Walton at that time, and he was able to scamper down into the corner. The lead pass a little low. Walton able to get it up with a burst of speed. Then Lauren Woods will earn a trip to the foul line as Reed a concession foul. Comes Aaron Harper, the freshman 6 7 uh, wingman, and Reed out with the two fouls. Woods has his first point of the game. Barnes is going to take Reed out, not let him pick up that third. He's so critically important. Free throws good. Uh, we did not see that same type of move last night in the UCLA game where Capono picked up his fourth foul. You're still bothered by that, aren't you? Why? Well, you should be happy. Southern California is right from the same area they won. <laughs> I'm very happy and proud of Henry Bibby. No, how about the whole team? I know Bibby <laughs> was a Calabrini, a Bruin. Come on. Luthenthal, what a terrific performance that was after virtually folding things up. Justin Holmes can't hit the three, and Woods pulls it down for Arizona. Final minute of this opening half. Five-point lead for Ole Miss. But Ole Miss is getting on the offensive glass. They're not getting beat in transition. They're denying Arizona every turn on the offensive end of the set offense. Right over Lockhart scores. Michael Wright using his muscle pulls Arizona within three. He has six. Does Lockhart have any fouls? Does Michael Wright have any free throw attempts? Zero free throw attempts for Michael Wright. Lauren Woods, what's he doing out there trying to steal the ball? Four seconds difference between the game and shot clock as Harper stands near the center court line, looks back at Coach Rod Barnes. If you're Lauren Woods, just wait at the three-point line. 
Down to five. Harper loses the ball. Boy, that was a bad effort. A lot of Walton, time. Walton, a lot of time. Gardner. Gardner and deflected out of bounds by Wade with 2.6 seconds. Arizona ball. The low total for this season in the first half for Arizona, 24 twice. The last time against UCLA. Arizona has to be very, very happy. Over the top to Lauren Woods. Knocked away, but a foul. Oh, my. That painful for Rod Barnes and the Ole Miss fans. Not a deep team, particularly in the front line. For Rod Barnes, they got a lot of versatility. You got Lock, you got Sanders, Holmes, Flanagan, Harper, Harrison, Wade, Josh Hayes. They can all play the interchangeable positions, but who can stay inside? You know, the big man. Lauren Woods shooting 81 percent tallest man on this Arizona team is also their best free throw shooter and he's showing you that three for three and with 1.6 seconds so two more points for Arizona to make it a 24 23 game Wade with a last second shot oh, almost. <laughs> lowest point total of the season for Arizona but they rally they were down by 12 and cut it to one at the intermission. 24 23, the number three seeds of Rod Barnes against number two seeded Lute Olson's Arizona Wildcats. A leading tough, tough season for him, though, losing his wife, the suspensions to Lauren Woods and Richard Jefferson, the run in with the NCAA. Right now, Arizona's got to get back to fundamental basketball, quit the gimmicks, just grind it out defensively, create some easy scoring opportunities. Tough to do against Ole Miss. Both teams start the same uh, starting fives that open the game off the foot of Michael Wright of Arizona to Ole Miss. So it's uh, Lockhart, Sanders, Flanagan, Holmes, and Reed, the freshman who led the way uh, for the Rebels in the first half. They're playing with so much confidence. Flanagan, Reed, Sanders on the perimeter. As well as Jason Holmes. Flanagan goes up with the first shot of the second half, rings out. There was one second of the shot clock, and here comes Gardner for Arizona. A good sign to see Jason Gardner on the run. When he's walking the ball up, that's not good for Arizona. Boy, the energy. You could just see a different era energy from this Arizona team in that first 30 seconds. Uh, we saw the same thing against Butler, where they came out flat. Butler uh, had control of that first half. Then it was a blowout throughout the second. Into Lockhart, the big center. Loyalist from Tucson coming to the four. And Lockhart scores plus one. This will be the first free throw shot by Ole Miss in the game. Richard Jefferson, who has gone away from the perimeter, long range bombs. He's not shooting the threes anymore. That really helped his game. And then Lockhart inside. Raheem, first team, all ACC. Second place in career block shots on the Ole Miss record books to Sean Murphy, class of 91 for the Rebels. Not a good free throw shooter, and Reed, the freshman, realizing that, ducked into the lane and got the rebound. And a foul called against Arizona. So only three fouls whistled against the Wildcats in the first half, but two already in just over a minute of the second half. This one goes against Gilbert Arenas, his second. You would think that Arizona would know that Lockhart's not a good free throw shooter as well. Everybody needs to be pinching in. Where is Jefferson, Woods, and Lauren, w and, excuse me, Michael Wright. And Lockhart gets his own rebound. Has it knocked away to Ole Miss. The guy, you look at that body, you say, he must have played football. He played one game in the ninth grade. He got banged around a little bit. He said, <laughs> I don't think so. He wants to go to where he can do the banging. Lauren Woods has to develop greater skill in terms of the second jump. Sanders the slasher, and he's grabbed by Gardner, so that equals the entire foul total of the first half against Arizona. They've got three now in the second. Arizona was playing a soft, passive zone in the first half, something that they don't do a lot of over the course of the regular season. Lou Olson is pretty much a man-to-man -man guy. Sanders loses it out of bounds. Turnover to Arizona with the Cats down by one. We talked about Rod Barnes being caught hot, hot rod. He was also called Spider-Man. He's got he the ostrich legs. <laughs> <laughs>
Gardner hustling down court, stolen away as Jason Flanagan comes up with it for the Rebels. Stick a fork in it, Michael Wright. Michael Wright has not had the huge game that you would expect. With the pressure on. Inside the Lockhart, knocked away by Wright. Jefferson to Arenas, all the way, and he hits the underside of the rim. And out of bounds to Arizona. Tough spacing for the Wildcats. Lute Olsen trying to set the offense, but the defense collapsing with Michael Wright. Lauren Woods, who's coming virtually on every possession. Richard Jefferson, love it when forwards drive it out. Lauren Woods denied above the rim. Lockhart, Lockhart jumping in front of Woods to steal the inbounds pass. And Flanagan has been perfect out at the point guard position in his floor game. Woods with a rebound and a reach-in foul goes against Aaron Harper. This game is a classic example about how basketball is not how big you are, it's how big you play, it's not how high you jump, it's where you are and when you jump. You got the high flyers, you got Lauren Woods, Richard Jefferson, Gilbert Arenas, Eugene Edgerson, Jason Gardner, an endless list for Arizona, yet they're out of position time and time again. It's the superior Antip anticipation and preparation for Ole Miss that has got them with this one-point lead and in control of the game. Here's Jason Gardner, all packed 10 as a freshman last year. And he feeds Lauren Woods for the easy two. That's a half dozen for the 7-1 center. And Arizona back in front by one. Rod Barnes, I don't know about that decision to double-team Jason Gardner at the backcourt. He's not going to turn it over. Richard Kirkland in the He's game not. for Ole Miss. Has it knocked away by Arenas. That's his fourth steal, and he takes it in for two. Arenas leading Arizona with eight, and Rod Barnes doesn't like what he sees. Going to take a 30-second timeout. Arenas and Gardner sparking a, a higher-spirited Arizona attack here on the second half. It's uh, obvious that Coach Lute Olson got after him pretty good during the intermission. Self-motivation, though, something that this Arizona team really needs to work on. Field goal percentage by half. Arizona scorching right now. Consistently, but a little bit and of And there's another steal by Jefferson this time. That's back-to-back -back steals for two, and Jefferson with a half dozen. 31-26, Arizona's biggest lead. The explosiveness of the Wildcats. They're bearing down at this moment. This was at Rod Barnes' worst nightmare. Foul here on Michael Wright. The but push it, on Lockhart. When you got a great shot blocker, get in the passing lanes. The way that James Worthy, when he played for Dean Smith, with Michael Jordan and with Sam Perkins, you get out there up every single time. Big deal if you don't get the steal. You got this big giant shot blocker behind you with the arms of an aircraft carrier in Lauren Woods who's going to knock them all down. Michael Wright with his second foul for Arizona. Four team fouls on the Cats. Great position defense, Gardner. Here's Harrison weaving inside, off to Reed for the bank. He uses the glass well, doesn't he? 12 for him. Justin Reed having a terrific game here and much needed, seeing why he was the SEC Freshman of the Year. Jefferson, it won't fall, and the foul. Mississippi's ball movement has been exquisite. They haven't tried to force anything all day. Down the lane, penetration and dish, championship level basketball. Ole Miss playing with the highest seed they've ever had. Number three, terrific success against ranked opponents this year, seven and three. They win close games. They're 10 and four against teams who are in the tournament. Five team fouls now in Arizona and only uh, one whistled against Ole Miss. And another foul, so that's six, and uh, the Rebels are going to be into the one-and-one one, uh, very quickly here in the second half. We've played only four minutes and four seconds, and this one on Jefferson, and the last two against Richard Jefferson at the offensive end uh, just the seconds ago, and now the defense, he has two. Defensive teamwork. Everybody talks about defense uh, teamwork on the offensive end. It's critically important on the defensive end as well. You've got to know with a big shot blocker out there that all you have to do is guard the perimeter. Once the guy gets by you, there's no reason on earth that you come in and foul down low when you've got a seven-footer who effortlessly gets up above the top of the square to send him back. Sanders hits both. He has four points and pulls the Rebels back to within one with four minutes gone in the second half.
Arizona roaring out of the gate to start the second half but Mississippi comes back it's a one point game test your knowledge of tournament trivia and participate in live polls throughout this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. Uh, as a player Bill in your two national championships and only losing four times in your three years did you have a sense of the bigness and all the excitement and noise that you know that you get as a fan here. Heaven no we just thought it was just another everyday game turnover Jason Gardner Lockhart at the passing lanes. But the sense that John Wooden created at UCLA was that every game was so very special. That a tournament it game is. just followed along as part it, of the it. season. The Absolutely. block and Jefferson has Arenas ahead. Too strong with the lead, but he's able to save her, does he? Gardner able to pick it off. Bad spacing time and time again on the fast break. Inside to Woods. And a reach in against uh, Raheem Lockhart. Nice post entry pass by Richard Jefferson. But even throw it a little harder. When you're getting that ball into the big man, throw it right at his face. They'll learn to catch it a lot better. First foul on Lockhart. Second team foul on Ole Miss, six against Arizona. The solid defense. Just been so frustrating. Again, a foul on Reed down below there. That'll be his third. Not a lot of options other than Reed and Lockhart up front. They're coming with with Gunn, John Gunn. 6'10 sophomore from in Oxford, Mississippi, the home side of the university, and Reed goes out. Well, the hometown boy, John Gunn, his mom owns a, the local realty. Gunn, Gunn Realty. Yeah. In a town of 10,000 people. Not counting the students in Oxford. Uh, count that basket. Richard Jefferson coming alive. Working the baseline, the uh, 6'7 Jefferson. And gets the foul from Jason Harrison. The explosiveness. Few players in college basketball history have had the athleticism, the gifts that Richard Jefferson had. In history? In history. Oh, come on. This huh? guy. Well, okay. David Thompson, yes. Three point play. Michael for Je Jordan, yes. This guy, Richard Jefferson, has virtually unparalleled athleticism. Were you getting that inside information? <laughs> Outside. <laughs> With five minutes gone here in the second half, Arizona by four. <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble. Jason Harrison, swole. Now, this is a tough matchup for Richard Jefferson. Jefferson is a foot and four <laughs> inches taller. Harper from deep in the corner. Gunn has it knocked away by Arenas, but Lockhart rips it away, and he's Ooh. fouled by Jefferson, and then Jefferson goes down. A loose elbow, Lockhart helps him up. That was after the play. It's certainly not intentional. Lockhart, tough as can be. Seventh team foul, and so Lockhart will go to the line. Lockhart just personifies the toughness of the Spider-Man. Jefferson trying to reach in and steal this, but that elbow out there, Good legal play. Jefferson decked after the initial whistle. And here comes Luke Walton. Ah, that's your source. Now I know why you've got all this inside information. <laughs> Roommate of Richard Jefferson, best of friends. Richard Jefferson from Phoenix, Arizona, where his parents are missionaries. The third foul on Jefferson. He says, I don't understand that one. I get nailed in the chops, and I get the foul too, and then I get the not play. Lockhart under 50% on the season from the line. Well, free throw shooting is not a strength of this Ole Miss team. They shoot 65% of the season. Down the stretch of both NCAA games up in Kansas City, Iona and Notre Dame, they were four for nine down the stretch and still won both games. Cliffhangers, they beat Iona by two, and then they beat Notre Dame by three. Lockhart, every free throw is a bonus as he pulls. Ole Miss within three, and now gets them both, 34-32. 14 and a half minutes remaining, second half. Arizona reclaimed the lead early here in the second half, but Ole Miss tough to shake. It's a two-point game. Arizona with the ball. Luke Walton back outside to Arenas for three. They've still yet to hit a three-point shot in seven tries, but there to knock home the rebound is big Lauren Woods. The rotation defensively. Faulty for Old Miss. 
You've got to keep Lauren Woods, Michael right off the offensive glass. That's where they can really kill you. Harper for three, and Aaron Harper, the 6'7 freshman right from Jackson, the capital city, makes it 36-35. An incredibly productive and efficient player, Harper. Nice drive, Jason Gardner. He needs more opportunities in the open court. Only four points for him in the game. But it's so difficult, if not impossible, to fast break against Ole Miss, as all those SEC teams found out this year. Reed for three. Well short. Woods clears it to Gardner. Here come the Cats. Leading by three. Jason Gardner trying to make something happen. Woods down the lane. Too hard, but right there to follow it home. Michael Wright now with six. Now the pace is Arizona. And Lockhart is signaling to the sideline that he wants out. And Barat Barnes, instead of substituting as they did with Marvin O'Connor last week, is just a timeout. I'm not taking you out of the game, big man. The turnovers have killed Arizona. Ole Miss has taken more shots. But now the tempo is all Arizona, up and down. Jason Gardner, Richard Jefferson is currently getting a breather. Lauren Woods in transition. Gilbert Arenas making some slashing, attacking forays to the hoop. Lute Olsen sends in Gene Edgerson and Luke Walton. As uh, Ole Miss now down by five, uh, this is an important trip. Uh, the straight-up defense in the second half that Lute Olsen has employed has been vastly superior to the zone defense early on, which gave Sanders away. to Lockhart. This is the easy one, and Edgerson makes his presence known immediately. A terrific pivot work to create space on the defensive boards. Nice passing. Walton for three. Rattles out. Jason Flanagan at 6-1, the guard with the rebound. Terrific ball movement. You've got to make perimeter shooting an aspect of your game, though. And Harper's trade rattles away. Walton seems to have added a different hitch to his shot, shooting it more behind his head of late, more like a Jamal Wilkes from UCLA years ago. And he better go back to school with his old man. <laughs> Arenas can't hit him the alley-oop, but the ball comes right back to him. He takes it to the hole, Offense. and an oh. offensive foul as he drives through Flanagan. Three now on Arenas. Gilbert Arenas, such a talented player, had Lauren Woods coming in. The lob initially was uh, just off the mark, and Gilbert Arenas runs over the stationary defender for Ole Miss. And the three fouls, he's going to stay in there. But Lou Dawson quickly realizing that, and he's going to take Arenas out and bring Richard Jefferson back in. It's, again, the versatility of the Wildcats. And meanwhile, the... Rod Barnes counters uh, as he brings in the little guy, Jason Harrison, the 5-3 point from Little Rock and Emmanuel Wade. Surprised we haven't seen Justin Wessel yet. Justin Wessel, a terrific front court reserve for Lou Dolson. Spreads the floor, can hit perimeter jumpers. Solid de defensive rebounder. Lockhart, not there. Waltz comes back unable out. Unable to get the rebound. Nice step out by Gene Edgerson. Here comes Harrison. A dry spell what? for Ole Miss here with 11.40 left in the second half. Wildcats who haven't played in a week right now finish the season so strong seem a little bit anxious trying to get into things that aren't there. 115 of their last 17 since Lute returned to the bench after the funeral of his wife Bobby who passed on January 1st. The Cats have won eight in a row. And we have a timeout. 11.33 remaining. Five-point lead, Arizona. Back in San Antonio, Lute Olson's uh, Wildcats lead by five and have the ball with 11 and a half remaining. We mentioned that his wife passed on January 1st. You know, the, we talk about assistant coaches all the time, but the real assistant coach for every head man in the business is his wife. And Bobby was all of the personality as Lauren Woods lays it in. A seven-point lead, the biggest of the game for the Cats. Lute Olson and his wife, his late wife Bobby, they are the John and Nell Wooden of the current generation. And I was there with Coach Wooden when Nell died back in the mid 80s. Lockhart scores for Ole Miss. And it just changes everything, as it has done for Coach Olson. But he's immersed himself in his job. He's put himself in a situation where he's just going to focus in on giving 
his life the way he has for so many years to make the team, make these young guys' dreams come true. Was your son convinced that he should go to University of Arizona because of that man? Absolutely. The same way that I chose UCLA because of John Wooden, Luke Walton looked at Lute Olson and said, hey, that's what I want. It's funny. It's funny. At, at the funeral, every speaker got up for Bob, at the Bobby Olson funeral, every speaker got up and said, hey, I was, I was Bobby Olson's favorite player. I was Bobby Olson's favorite. Luke Walton down the lane. And the hey, I'm supposed to call the play-by-play. <laughs> -play. How come just when he shoots, you call it? <laughs> 44 37 and as they were leaving the church that day Luke Walton went up to coach Olsen and said hey coach I want you to know that I was Bobby Olsen's favorite player Now she made everyone feel that they were the favorite didn't she? Oh banging inside and that'll go against Lockhart on the charge His second By contract we have to show a replay of young Walton <laughs> shot down the lane the spinner the drop of the wrist, a propensity to turn the wrist the wrong way, often results in shots rolling out. Two points tonight for Luke Walton. Passes like his uh, papa, and uh, I know <laughs> much more frequently. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't just die when it goes inside, huh? <laughs> Meanwhile, Arizona turning up the heat on Old Miss. They lead by seven with the ball, approaching the midpoint of this second 20-minute period. Edgerson handling the high post. A more creative passer than Woods or Wright up front. Short was Jefferson, but he gets his oh. own rebound, scores, and is fouled. And the Wildcats starting to make breaks for themselves with Jefferson coming alive. Gilbert Arenas and Jason Gardner, the great guards. Clark Kellogg's been talking all tournament long about the impact of guards. Well, Richard Jefferson capable of playing that guard position, which he's doing right now as Gilbert Arenas played with the three fouls. Third foul on Raheem Lockhart. Jefferson looking for his 12th point. And it comes right back out to him. And he saves, calling timeout in midair. The second time tonight, that play for Richard Jefferson. It's Arizona in the second half. Arizona Wildcats they were 25 and 7 on the season 14th consecutive year that Lute Olson's teams won 20 at least 20 games but look at their losses Purdue Connecticut Illinois Mississippi State Stanford Oregon UCLA all teams that played very physical it wore them down pushed them around got them in a half court game the way Old Miss has tried to do with good success throughout until this last couple of minutes. Old Miss needs a defensive stop. They're down by nine. They had the ball. Now Duke come up with it on the steal by Jason Flanagan. Ahead to Harper. Sanders. Reed. Good defense. Walton and Edgerson teaming up role players off the bench. And Gene Edgerson fighting ferociously. Reminder, second game of the Sweet 16 at the Alamo Dome features Illinois and Kansas, two storied basketball powers. The Illini, the number one seed, Jefferson has it ring out. Edgerson again. And Penn State and Temple, of course, in the other late game at Philadelphia in a battle for bragging rights in the Keystone State. A foul starting to really become a problem for the Ole Miss Rebels. Reed has got three, Harper three, Lockhart three, Harrison three. That one now on Flanagan, Flanagan three. Now Flanagan three. At the line, Lauren Woods, who's deadly at the stripe, and four for four late in the first half of this game, looking for his 11th point. Five straight, and a 10 point margin now for University of Arizona. Ole Miss, they may need to draw on some of their history at this point. They may need to bring back Johnny Newman, the gunner from 71, who averaged over 40 points a game, Johnny Newman. Number 
one seed Michigan State on to the Elite Eight and here the number two seed from the Pac-10 the University of Arizona with a huge uh, second half and with just under nine minutes remaining they lead by 11 their biggest lead of the game as Old Miss has gone cold coming, four for 15 in the half coming back not a strength of Old Miss but Justin Reed who has been easily the best offensive performer tonight as the Arizona Wildcat defense has shut down leading scorer Raheem Lockhart Reed with 14 to lead all scores back door to Jefferson back to arenas for three and another miss from outside the arc they're 0 for 9 the Cats Harper their best three point shooter for Ole Miss can't hit Richard Jefferson and, and Eugene Edgerson are playing terrific ball in all aspects Harper again another miss Lockhart battling with arenas and a whistle the arenas is fourth foul he looks up uh, appealing to the officials uh, we talked with his dad who is a part time actor you've seen him in commercials in a Pepsi ad and a Jack in the Box ad and uh, Arenas himself young Arenas would like to go into the acting uh, field but uh, no pity there from the officials he couldn't sell them with the emotion <laughs> well Gilbert Arenas he's going to be very busy for the next 15 to 20 years on this court <laughs> only a sophomore all Pac-10 this year amazingly out of the Los Angeles San Fernando Valley area virtually ignored by schools like UCLA and USC he was the leading scorer in the state of California how could you overlook him at uh, Grand High School there in the San Fernando Valley when you look at Gilbert Arenas he's, he's got it all reminds me so very much of the ex Kansas Jayhawk legend Jojo White Sanders had taken the uh, position at the free throw line and you saw Arena said I know who I fouled. Wait a minute I didn't follow him but I know who the guy was and it was the big man Lockhart. Referees taking a look at the replay to make sure that they put the right rebel on the line. One of the great things about this rebel team though is the lessons of life that they've learned from their fine coach Spider-Man Rod Barnes. Rod Here's what uh, they're looking at. The long jumper clanks off the rim. Richard Jefferson denies defensively. It's got to be Lockhart going to the free throw line. No question, and that's uh, making sure. That's good officiating. <laughs> and the fans are getting into this. The University of Illinois fans across the way. They've been quiet too long. They're waiting for their fighting Illini to take the court in the second game. They get in on the fun as big Raheem Lockhart toes the stripe with eight points and the toughness of Bill Self's team certainly reflected in the fighting Illini willing to get down and dirty with anyone Lockhart who's shooting 47 percent on the season is three for four tonight back to an eight point game the lessons of life that Rod Barnes teaches though begins every practice with a quote let's get some work done today guys and then when they close practice out it's hey be sure to take care of business away from the game before we get back ready for more work tomorrow here's the press for Ole Miss and Gardner able to handle it himself somebody's got to come and take the ball be the release man it's often Walton Michael Wright pulls back from 12. Richard Tipped Jefferson. in by Jefferson. The explosive performance by Jefferson in the second half. Guy who missed most of last season with a broken foot. That injury suffered in the first game of the Pac-10 season up at Stanford, a game that the Wildcats won. Oh, there's the little man playing big as Jason Harrison hits the long tray his first points of the game Jason Gardner's got to bust his press just drive right up and attack shoot that ball overpassing Richard Jefferson a double double the man from Phoenix Arizona Moon Valley High School 11 points 11 rebounds Back in San Antonio, you've heard Dick and Bill talk about the loss of Bobby Olson, the first lady of Wildcat basketball. Lute Olson told me today all five of his children are here. It's an enormous source of comfort. He said the toughest time is a few hours from now, tonight, when he's alone in the hotel. The best times, though, are right now during the games. More reasons the Wildcats want to keep on playing. Dick. 
right, thank you, Leslie. A steal by Ole Miss, and then it's Lauren Wood stealing it right back. The big guy, and then knocked away by Flanagan. Well, Lauren trying to get his rhythm, trying to get his momentum, but Leslie was talking about the family being here. Everyone who's ever played for Lute and Bobby Olson, they're part of the Arizona family. Two of the most significant members in the history of the program, Sean Elliott and Steve Kerr, unable to be here tonight because they're on the road. Lute Olson can't hit the rebound, but Woods is there to tap it home, and it's back to an eight-point lead. Ole Miss, first time in the history of the university they've made it to the Sweet 16. This football university, the Rebels, they've awakened the basketball interest in that state. The loose balls are all going Arizona's way. They're clamping down on defense, forcing Ole Miss to beat them one on one, not the strength of their game. Sanders, and it's going to count plus one. Foul on Walton, his first. Beautiful drive by David Sanders, a sophomore out of Jackson, Mississippi. He and Harper along with Justin Reed all going to the same high school Provine uh, the Rams uh, state champions David Sanders Mississippi High School player of the year at Provine a couple years ago makes the three point play and back to five are the Rebels but it was Sanders defensive play at the end of the game against Notre Dame's Matt Carroll that preserved that dynamic win that got him for the first time to this level Gardner down the alley and a whistle the foul I believe will be against uh, Harrison of Ole Miss and that's his fourth. He was an all conference running back in high school at Parkview High in Little Rock Arkansas. That he was tough to find in the hole. I mean, if he <laughs> put his shoulder down, I mean, what do you tackle? Well, Harrison had the huge game in Ole Miss's first NCAA victory a couple years ago when they beat Villanova 72 70. They had never won an NCAA tournament game but just a few years ago. Get 12 points, five assists, and two steals, Justin Harrison did as he takes a brief rest. Meanwhile, Lute Olson sends in Gene Edgerson. As Jason Gardner hits a pair of free throws. You know, where's the offense going to come from from Ole Miss? Lockhart has been pretty much de denied as Michael Wright has done a, a solid job in the second half. Raheem Lockhart in the hole looking for the ball right on him. Harper, the top three point shooter for Ole Miss, this freshman with the ball now. Boo! Sanders with a good save on the pass, down to 10 on the clock. Sanders slashing inside, can't hit. And it goes to Arizona. With Woods out of the game, the defense has to change. Arizona plays a completely different style. You got Gene Edgerson being the tough guy inside, but he certainly can't get the elevation. Open court play, Gardner. 545. Gardner having trouble handling the ball, and Jefferson helping him out. Boy, he does handle the ball so smoothly at 6-7, doesn't he? Unlimited future, Richard Jefferson. Ooh, Gardner got away with a forearm push. Edgerson over the top, and the rebound to Reed. If you don't have a clear tip, grab it with two hands and bring it back if you're Gene Edgerson or Walter. Flanagan from three-point range. 52, 54, 50 now. Eight points for Flanagan. Even though they're not a great three-point shooting team, Ole Miss, all season long, their trademark has been make the big ones. And the turnover, and that gets the Rebel fans on their feet. Poor communication. Gardner and Walton that time. Get this, Bill Walton. Two assists for Arizona. Two in the game, 17 turnovers to two assists, and yet Lute Olson's team leads by four. And that's a very tenuous four, but you're not going to get a lot of assists against a team like Ole Miss. Confusion here is the horn is blowing while the ball is in play. But they make you beat them off the dribble. With the poor shooting, very, very difficult to rack up assists or a high percentage. 
Mason Holmes back inside to Raheem Lockhart. Double teamed. Can't hit the short shot. And Edgerson there to take it for Arizona. 54-50 Cats. Four and a half minutes to go here in San Antonio. The winner to meet either Illinois or Kansas in game two of this region. Jefferson powers inside to score. Hard to see where the... There's no foul called on that play. Bodies just going to the ground. People grabbing, holding. 15 points now for Jefferson. Toughness in the basket Harper. area. Tough. Skidding move by Harper, the freshman. That pull Ole Miss back within four. Four minutes to go. Who's going to be the offensive go-to guy? You got Gilbert Arenas on the bench with four fouls. Michael Wright on the bench resting. Not having a strong offensive game. Can Woods deliver? And the hold against Raheem Lockhart. No basket. Four fouls now on Lockhart. Arizona's previous basket. The weave out in front. The dribble handoff. Walton sets up Richard Jefferson, who shakes off the grabbing, clutching defense. And Lauren Woods unable to recover defensively. The footwork. The awkward attempt at recovering balance. Seven for seven is Lauren Woods from the line. Both teams now in the double bonus as Lockhart will stay in with four or Willie. Here comes uh, Reed and Reed will replace Jason Holmes. Now you've got Gilbert Arenas back in the lineup too. And this is the guy who can create for himself against the toughest of defense. Lauren Woods hitting all eight of his free throw attempts, and it's Arizona by six. Back with a CBS Sportsline stat of the game, which reflects the superior height advantage of the Arizona Wildcats, a plus 18 points in the paint for complete tournament coverage. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. We're back in San Antonio with 348 remaining. One of these to join Michigan State, Stanford, Maryland, Duke, and Southern California in the Elite Eight. Jefferson's got 15 points. Wright's got eight. Lauren Wood 16, including eight at the foul line where he's perfect. Pounding it inside. Nice defense once again, Lauren Woods. Edgerson uh, able to use his body well on Raheem Lockhart, who's playing with four fouls. The luxury that Lute Olson has to be able to come with a Gene Edgerson off the bench in an era of college basketball where there's not a lot of real deep teams. We'll see one later on tonight, Illinois. They're certainly incredibly deep. Harper, the three point threat. But who would have ever thought that in this game, the round of 16, that Michael Wright would be sitting on the bench at this point of, of a critically close game? Five on the clock. Reed. And they're going to call it against him on the drive as good position taken by big Lauren Woods. Four fouls on Justin Reed. They're trying to isolate and use the quickness, the creativity, and the imagination. Terrific footwork by Lauren Woods, able to establish the great position, a forearm to the chest. Easy call every time. Lauren Woods, a terrific defensive game. Sanders returns and Harper out for Old Miss. Edgerson sits down as Michael Wright returns for Arizona. Gene Edgerson plays great. They take him out. <laughs> Gives him really some powerful minutes, doesn't he? Approaching the three-minute mark here in the second half, and Arizona with a ball and a six-point lead. There's nothing like senior leadership as you're going for the championship. Right inside on Lockhart with four fouls, and Michael Wright, the big man from Chicago, now has ten. But the machine that Arizona is capable of being is just rolling at this point. Lockhart, and he's fouled. Lockhart is going to go to that left hand every single time. You watch the Notre Dame game from a week ago, and he just torched the fighting Irish with that left hand, and they never made him go back the other way. If you make this guy go back to his weak hand, uh, we really haven't seen what he's got going in that direction. He practiced his game on a dirt court in his backyard against his father, who played at Tougaloo Mississippi College and was an ABA draft. And here 
is Raheem's uh, numbers on the season compared to the tournament, and he's really elevated his game. Above the Raheem. <laughs> Lockhart doing it all. In the first half when they played the zone, he was the passer. Everybody else was involved. In the second half, the changing defense, Ole Miss unable to adapt. His pressing defense has not cost Ole Miss anything as Jason Gardner has not been able to torch it tonight. Wildcats with the ball in the seven point lead and timeout called by Jason Gardner. 19 seconds on the shot clock. Arizona protecting the lead. In the first half, Mississippi had a 16 0 run. Arizona scoreless for six minutes and led by as much as 12. It was cut to a one point lead at the intermission, and then the second half has belonged to the Wildcats. And in the second game, KU and the Fighting Illini will go to work a half hour after the conclusion of this game. What a terrific game that's going to be. Now, big men have got to come away and handle the ball, break the offense here if you're Arizona. Because Ole Miss is in a scramble situation. Seven on the shot clock. Holmes is coming after every single ball. Right. Back outside of Jefferson with one. And the rebound, Holmes of Ole Miss. Here come the Rebels down by seven. It appeared as if Wright had a good shot. He passed up on it. Oh, rebound but... right. Hands off to Gardner at 5'10", the little man from Indianapolis, Indiana. He's quick. Kirkland, Flanagan, just double teaming, trapping at every single opportunity. Four fouls now on Jason Flanagan. Gardner, an outstanding free throw shooter. Terrific pressure and clutch player. Named to the freshman All-America team a year ago. Some thought he was the top freshman in the nation, averaging 12 and a half a game, nearly five assists. Foul trouble piling up for Ole Miss. Harrison, Flanagan, Reed, Lockhart, all with four. Arenas on the bench for large portions of the game. He's in for the closing minute 48. They haven't needed his explosive go-to offensive game tonight, Gilbert Arenas. Rod Barnes has all his three-point shooters in the game now as Gardner hits both. He's uh, made all six of his free throws. Jason Harrison time. He made the big three-pointer to give him the win against Notre Dame. Lockhart outside to give him a pick. Won't fall. Reed with a rebound and an Arizona foul. Edgerson reaching in. One and a half remaining. As to the line goes, Justin Reed for Justin Ole Miss, Reed down by nine. Well, Lauren Woods, who got hammered in the head on that scrum underneath the basket, has to become a better defensive rebounder. Has to learn you don't get rebounds by being over seven feet tall if you get them by your position on the floor. Reed has 15 points. Uh, Sparking uh, his team in the first half. Harrison goes out and Sanders back in for Ole Miss. Edgerson in just for a moment. Uh, Walton comes He's back out. in. He can spread the floor, handle the ball a little bit, find some open cutters at the hoop. But now Arizona has to stay aggressive. We saw in the game last night when USC got into a world of trouble when they went too conservative down the stretch. Reed misses the second, oh. and Woods pulls in the rebound. Nice range by Lauren Woods, coming from the far side to snatch that rebound. Gardner, just <laughs> impossible, working low to the floor and then driving and scoring. That should do it for Arizona with 1.10 to go. Is that Jason Gardner or Marcus Haynes? That's who I thought of, too. <laughs> he looked like the Harlem Globetrotter star. Foul on Luke Walton, who was named after Maurice Lucas, your teammate on the 1977 Portland Trail Blazers championship team. Surprised you didn't name one of your sons John after your beloved coach. As you know all too well, Dick, I'm way too slow a learner for that. <laughs> 
Reed unable to connect on the free throw. Arizona fans now behind the Wildcat bench standing now a minute eight seconds away from the Elite Eight. A lot of folks at the start of the season thought this Arizona team uh, would win the national championship if you had to pick one. Reed gets one out of two and a time uh, called to allow Aaron Harper to come in. He replaces Reed. But while it hasn't been the regular season that they hoped for, and while they do have the seven losses to seven very solid programs, the dream is still alive, the chance. But they're going to have to play a lot better than they played tonight. Woods took it away from Walton. Gardner going to take it all blocked by Lockhart. Out of bounds to the Cats with 58.5 seconds left. But Arizona plays their best when there's a little bit of fear in their minds. When they think that they're the better team, when they're overconfident, they come out and they can very easily give one away. Jefferson recovers the ball, and now they keep it alive with 15 seconds. Chew up the clock. And wisely done by Harrison. He could have shot there. Now Gardner with eight. Renus with six. Three, he two. doesn't even know it. He doesn't even know it. Didn't get it off. <laughs> Didn't get it off. It's not going to hurt him anyway. Used the full 35 <laughs> seconds, so now Ole Miss has only 32 plus. And now the substitution, they bring Gene Edgerton back in to play the power game to give him that toughness on the boards. What a weapon, Gene Edgerson. Harper fires the three, way off the mark. Sanders scrambles, and a foul as he made his move toward the basket, 23.4 seconds. Well, Rod Barnes, coach of the year, Naismith, coach of the year from one of the smallest little towns in all of Mississippi, Satarsha, 200 uh, population, and uh, he's grown uh, very big in his ways. No one thought he had a great chance as a player, became a star at Ole Miss. Now he's become a star on the bench. His dad, Charles Ray, was a sharecropper. Satarsha, 217 people, just south of the Panther Swamp, on the banks of the mighty Yazoo River. Satarsha, the gateway to Mechanicsburg, <laughs> Mississippi. So small. If you wanted to stay overnight, you had to stay in a Motel 3. <laughs> <laughs> But what a man he is at 35 years of age. The future of Old Miss basketball is in great hands. His mom is here tonight, Gladys. Sanders gets one out of two, but it's Arizona by eight points and only 23 seconds left. And Arizona's ability to shoot free throws. We saw last week in the Western Regional Stanford, the big men going to the line and just knocking down free throw after free throw. And uh, Arizona shows that same capacity. Well, you got Lauren Woods, who's a terrific free throw shooter. Michael Wright is a terrific free throw shooter. How's Tonight? this kid? Is he any good? Well, he's a lot better than his dad ever was. Arizona 16 for 18 from the line. You know, the trouble with the Waltons, they were always so strong with their shot. <laughs> Remember, I mean, if you just, if the brace of the rim had been the basket, you'd have been a 1,000% shooter. We could have shot it from the side and banked it in on the John Wooden 45 degree angle. Like father, like son. <laughs> Here comes make Harrison. A, make a shot. Harper from three. Just forces it, not close. Walton with a rebound and he's fouled. And to the other end with 12 seconds left. Jason Holmes second foul. You know, the, the agony of of that final loss and we're going to see Roy Williams Kansas team come in against Illinois in the next game and Williams said it very well he said you know the the suddenness uh, with which the NCAA tournament uh, brings your season to a halt is the harshest thing there is in the game it's just all of a sudden it's over you know, and for the Mississippi Rebels that have had such a great season and in 12 seconds it's going to be over and you'll be able to enjoy some wonderful moments but it's hard to assimilate it's and such an empty feeling. I've been on both ends of it. March 23rd, 1974, 27 years ago. Harrison fires up the three, and the final seconds will tick away, and the University of Arizona joins fellow Pac-10 members, Southern California 
and Stanford as uh, the Elite Eight teams. Lute Olson's team to be feared as they move on.